The McDonnell Douglas MD-12 was the first attempt at replicating the Boeing 747 jumbo jet's success. However, the goal was a little bit out of reach for the company and it never went ahead. Why was it designed? What would the MD-12 be like to fly? And what happened? Let's explore this never-built aircraft. In the late 80s, McDonnell Douglas was looking towards its next aircraft. It had been riding on the coattails of its DC-10 program for decades and had recently launched the new MD-11, which was essentially an unimaginative stretched version of the original DC-10. However, the MD-11 failed to capture the sales MD needed and had several design flaws that airlines didn't like. It didn't live up to the range expectations, nor the fuel burn passenger capacity. McDonnell Douglas needed a new aircraft design, something bold to fix the problem of congested airports, bigger than the MD-11, and made for continent-to-continent -continent routes. The Boeing 747 had enjoyed that market for a long time, and it was time that McDonnell Douglas brought its own concept to the market. Called the MD-12X, the concept was originally proposed as a natural extension to the MD-11. It would still be a trijet, but it would be larger and fix the flaws of the earlier design. You might recall in another video, we discussed Airbus's attempt to partner up with McDonnell Douglas for a trijet aircraft for its A340 series. While that never happened, it does seem that Airbus's influence rubbed off on McDonnell Douglas and it began with the engineers. Splitting the cockpit above the passenger level on the MD-11 design allowed for a cargo door for future freighter versions and also panoramic views for the first class cabin, a cockpit design much like the Boeing 747. From here, the length of the lower cabin would extend to the tail and the plane would become a true double-decker aircraft. And this plane was big. The length of the MD-12 was 208 feet with a wingspan of 213 feet. And this plane would have been able to carry 430 passengers in a typical three-class layout. Or if all one-class high-capacity layout, it could actually carry 511 passengers. McDonnell Douglas claimed that a 3,000 nautical mile flight of the MD-12 would burn around 1% less fuel per seat than the Boeing 747-400, or even 12% less fuel burn per seat if in a high-capacity configuration. When it comes to range, the MD-12 would have a range of 8,020 nautical miles, around about the same as the Airbus A380 today, although the high-capacity layout version was only rated for 7,170 nautical miles, which just goes to show that even with four engines, the design still didn't have enough power and still made compromises. McDonnell Douglas envisioned that this aircraft would be used for transatlantic travel between London and North America, as well as ply the trade in Southeast Asia with its high populations. The high capacity version would have likely been directed at the Japanese domestic market, one that had been successful for Boeing and its 747 series. McDonnell Douglas would also propose two other versions of the aircraft, a freighter for cargo operations, a regular customer of the MD-11, with a range of 4,360 nautical miles, and a combi version that would have allowed airlines to swap out the seats for cargo between flights where needed. This would have been targeted at airlines like KLM, who operated combi 747s to the Caribbean along with other destinations. The MD-12 concept was launched in 1992 with much fanfare and with a heavy marketing campaign, with plans for the first flight of the MD-12 to take place in 1995 and delivery to the first launch customer in 1997. However, despite all the press, no airline actually came through with a solid order and there would never actually be a launch customer. What exactly happened with the MD-12? There was also the burning question of how this aircraft would be paid for, especially by cash-strap McDonnell Douglas. The firm decided to partner up with the Taiwan Aerospace Corporation and form a company to produce the new design. 
This new company would have McDonnell Douglas as the majority shareholder with 51%, with Taiwan Aerospace having 40% and the other companies having 9% of the remaining shares. This was all done in hope and anticipated that Asian carriers would order the new aircraft. However, this partnership fell apart and by 1993, McDonnell Douglas decided to go in a different direction, citing too high costs for the development of the aircraft. While at the time it had estimated a cost of 4 billion US dollars to produce, we know now from the A380 development that the true price point would have been aggressively higher. In 1996, the airframe maker came to the market with a simple tweak of the MD-11. Instead of the MD-12, they would present the MD-11LR, a long-range version of the MD-11, pushing its range up to 8,320 nautical miles. Trading the range for passenger capacity would be the MD-11 Stretch. This version would have the same wing as the LR, but would be 31 feet longer than the original MD-11, and it would be able to carry 375 seats in three classes. Both of these concept MD-11 planes would actually recycle the wing from the MD-12, giving it that extended range and extended lifting capacity. In addition, McDonnell Douglas also studied a twin-engine design to rival the Airbus A330 and the Boeing 777, but it never really made it further than internal rumours. In my personal opinion, this would have been the right direction forward for the firm, but hindsight is 2020. The firm would launch the MD-11 stretch variants at the beginning of 1996. However, they would not really be successful and it pushed the company to the breaking point with the firm ultimately shutting down future aircraft development. By the end of the same year, the company would be approached by their rival Boeing with a buyout offer. Now, I don't mean to start a conspiracy theory or to sell out tinfoil in your local area, but during the research of this article, we came across a rumor that McDonnell Douglas started the MD-12 and MD-11 stretch programs in an effort to drive up its share price before the Boeing takeover. Now, none of these rumors can be substantiated, but the timing of the 1996 MD-11 stretch and the Boeing takeover is very close. The fact that Boeing ended up paying $62 per share, a huge premium to the McDonald's closing price of $52 per share, certainly leads to some interesting fireplace discussion. Leave a comment down below if you think so as well. As for the MD-12 program, well, that chapter is closed. Or is it? Instead of a cliched storybook ending, did the project truly die when Boeing took over the firm? You see, Boeing for some time also had a project on its books called the New Large Aeroplane. In 1993, Boeing was about to launch to the market a true double-decker Boeing 747 design, one with a cabin that ran the whole way through the aircraft. Boeing's design would have been able to seat 606 passengers in a three-class layout and be able to fly 7,800 nautical miles. Seemingly the failure of the McDonnell Douglas MD-12 only a year earlier, Boeing decided to scrap the new large aeroplane and instead work on a redesign of the 747 that would one day become the Boeing 747-8. As for the next Boeing new large aeroplane, they would roll the project specifications into the Boeing 777X series, which has already taken flight and will be flying for airlines come late next year. Looking back on the project today, we can see that the MD-12 was ahead of its time. It was the Airbus A380 10 years before Airbus even thought of the idea and may have dramatically changed the landscape had it been built. Why airlines at the time chose not to invest in McDonnell Douglas Vision is truly unknown, but we can summarize that failed promises of the MD-11 and a rising fuel price had made them question the need for such a large aircraft. It would take another decade of rising airport congestion that would see the product more viable in the form of the Airbus A380. Simply put, the MD-12 was too late to the market, a market that questionably even needed the aircraft type. 
Thanks so much for watching today's video. It was great to dive into a forgotten part of history and see where things could have gone differently had McDonnell Douglas gone through with this radical new double-decker super jumbo design. If you want to support the channel more than just watching, then we actually have a new Patreon that has videos early when possible, exclusive live streams, tutorials, and a chat section for fans. I'll put the link down in the description. Otherwise, then leave a like, and if you want to stay tuned for more videos just like this one, then consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching.